Hey guys, when taking your NCLEX exam, you will stumble upon at least one of the inflammatory heart diseases at some point. And I guarantee this, the thing about cardiac diseases, especially inflammatory uh, diseases, is that we don't really fully look at the, the diseases as a whole, or at least trying to make a connection between each disease to fully understand the bigger picture. Because... When we do look at the whole picture, it's easier to simplify the differences and, and the correlation between the inflammatory diseases. Now, first, let me ask you this. Do you know what an uh, inflammatory heart disease is? It's basically, it basically pertains to the inflammation of the heart muscle, right? Which is usually due to an infection that develops from either a bacteria or a virus. Now, take note that this type of inflammation is often associated with episodes of rheumatic fever. Right, and so another one is a big one is Kawasaki disease. Now, those two are very important to know for your NCLEX because those two diseases, if untreated, leads to inflammation of the cardiac muscle, right, and the cardiac vessels, and it's a very, very bad thing. Now, the three inflammatory conditions that you might mostly encounter in your NCLEX exam can be classified as either pericarditis, myocarditis, and endocarditis. Now first, let's go back to our, our anatomy because this can help us understand these conditions in a, in a more simpler way. Now, the heart wall is comprised of three layers, right? The, the, the outer epicardium that covers the, the pericardial layer or the pericardium, right? The middle myocardium layer and the inner endocardium layer so it's important to mentally distinguish between the pericardium your myocardium and the endocardium layers of the heart wall so again the pericardium is the thin layer of connective tissue and fat and serves as more of like the layer of protection for the heart right and it's the outside layer under the pericardium is the myocardium which is the muscle tissue of the heart and it's usually composed of the cardiac muscles right and these muscles contract and and the the conduction of electricity coordinates with the contraction right for the muscle now lastly the inner layer or the endocardium right is is composed of endothelial cells and it's also composed of the smooth muscle of the heart and the vessels that connects to the valves that is why when we talk about an endocarditis infection it is sometimes referred to as an infection of the heart valves right so Again, a good way to remember this is that the pericardium is the sac or the outer layer, the myocardium is the middle layer and is also the thickest layer, right? And lastly, our endocardium is more of the inner layer and basically acts as a barrier between the blood and the heart muscle. Again, with that in mind, we can simplify this even more by saying that the pericarditis is an inflammation of the pericardium, which is the sac surrounding the heart, right? Myocarditis is an inflammation infection of the heart muscle, right? Because since it's the inner heart muscle, right? And lastly, endocarditis is referred to, like I mentioned before, an infection of the heart valves, right? So that makes everything more simple and more easier to remember. Now, I want to quickly go over important things to remember for your NCLEX exam. Now, one of the ways to diagnose a patient for potential pericarditis is assessing our patient for pain, right? But the problem with that is pain can usually also be associated with other conditions, right? So, one of the more important symptomatic assessments to diagnose our patient with a potential pericarditis is basically by looking for what we call the pericardial rub. Now, a pericardial rub, right, or it can also sometimes be called a pericardial friction rub, can be detected by obviously using a stethoscope. And basically, it's a sign of inflammation, right? So let me simplify more. Upon doing some auscultation with our patient, there is basically an extra heart sound, right? Aside from the typical systolic and diastolic, there would be an extra diastolic sound. So therefore, it becomes a, a three-component heart sound, right? Which means it would be a one systolic and two diastolics. Now, some textbooks would say that it resembles the sound of a, a squeaky leather, and sometimes it's also described as a grating, a scratching, or a rasping sound, okay? Now, this is it for now. Again, thank you so much, guys, for spending your time with me. I really do appreciate it, knowing that you have learned something that can hopefully uh, make you pass your NCLEX exam. 
And if you do feel that you want to help support me with continuing with all these NCLEX videos, just please visit my website at www.allnursingnotes.com. And there's an NCLEX course in there that's available for, for everybody. And it's, it has basically helped plenty, plenty of people, thousands and hundreds of NCLEX takers pass their exam. So again, thank you so much, guys, for spending your time with me. Good luck on your exams. I know you will do great. And God bless. Thank you.